mankind explored the galaxy. Nothing. Only us. Disheartened, we colonized and thrived. One day an experiment exposed the truth. Our reality is a second out of phase with the rest of existence, which is populated by aliens. The brief glimpses seen of us, we are their eldritch terrors. I watched through the stabilizer that finally allowed us to view their world. The aliens were short and had a slight blue tinge to their skin, as well as a light yellow glow, highlighting them as though they were all dim lanterns. Occasionally, they would look in the direction of our stabilizer, a hole in reality, and disappear in a puff of black smoke. My smile widened energetically as I turned to my colleague. They can teleport? I laughed as he watched Reed data coming in on his tablet. It seems like it, Heron said, looking up from the tablet and another creature puffing away, its face inscrutable as it left. I think they're spooked and leave as soon as they see us, I said. Not a bad theory. We're probably the creepiest thing they've... Heron frowned at his tablet as he trailed off. What? Notice something new? I asked. How many did you say there were in this area? He asked. Um, I pulled out my own tablet. We started at 300. Why? No, I mean the entire population, he asked. Every one of their known living creatures. We got exactly 10,303. That was the calculation right as we opened the stabilizer, I read. It's down by a dozen. He looked up and saw another puff away in the ghoulish black smoke. Another just dropped off. Yeah, they're teleporting, right? I clarified. To where? The live reading of their population drops as soon as they pop away, he said, suddenly sounding queasy. I don't know, I guess they... I grew a frown myself as one of my eyes narrowed in a conclusion. They're dying? Is that how they die? I asked. I... I think so, Heron breathed. Just from seeing us? Maybe they can't fathom what they see. It's too much to take in and continue living, he deduced. We aren't even doing anything. We're just... I saw another turn its head our way and disappear. Their population dropped by another. Ah, I don't get it. How do we know for sure they're not just teleporting away somewhere? I think they've made that pretty clear. Heron pointed to a dozen of the aliens approaching the portal with covers over their eyes. They held an item in each of their hands that looked like a smooth silver cube. They know they can't look at us but still want to communicate, I said, fascinated once more. What do you think those devices they're holding are? Heron asked. Suddenly the items began to take on the glow of the aliens and floated about a foot above their hands. Suddenly, each one emitted an ear-piercing scream and fired a red projectile our way. Seven flew beside the portal, the aliens unable to aim properly, but one of them managed to get in through the edge and touch my work desk, obliterating it in a deafening blast that put it on fire. The fire was odd and blue. It burned faster than any fire I'd ever seen and ate my things in the span of two seconds. Heron and I looked at one another as the devices floated back to the alien's hand. They remained very quiet, listening intently. Heron and my eyes widened as we realized they were listening for whether we were dead or not after that attack. Heron flipped the power on the stabilizer, shutting the portal immediately. I stared at the wall that stood where the portal was a moment before. What now? I said, a mix of disappointment and terror in my voice. Well, it's unfortunate, but it looks like we were unable to make contact with any aliens and we will have to shut down this program, Heron said quickly, gathering a dustpan and broom to clean up what used to be my work area. Definitely no reason to ever search for aliens when they clearly don't exist and we cannot interact with them, he said, clearly panicking. Right, yeah, a shame about the failed experiments. I picked up on what he was saying, grabbing the broom to get rid of the evidence as soon as possible. 